Hey there, on this episode of Open at Microsoft, I'm going to be chatting with my buddy Ethan here all about Power Toys. Hey there, Ethan. I've been tinkering with the Power Toys for a little bit, but what exactly are the Power Toys? Yeah, great question, Jeff. Simply put, Power Toys is a set of utilities for power users on Windows, and really they exist to make users more productive on their devices. Um, if we want to take a step back and think about the really big picture story of how Power Toys came to be and really what it is today, Power Toys is at its core a community built product of features. Um, one of the things that's great about Power Toys is a lot of the um, utilities that folks contribute to or that our teams work on internally uh, to make better, these actually end up either going into the OS themselves or certainly inspiring a lot of the OS features. And today we can okay. take a look at some of those features, what have been inspired in the OS. We can even take a look at power toys that have migrated directly into the OS and talk about sort of the future of, of where we think this is going. Oh man. Okay. There are some really unique uh, tools and, and toys in there that, that have been inspired. Let's take a look in, at some of your favorite ones that are out there that folks use. Yeah, sure. I'll share my screen here. Um, what you see here on the screen is what pops up when you first install Power Toys. So this is our, our welcome splash page, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. And this is a great spot to really get started. So if you have just joined Power Toys and are trying to understand what each of the utilities do, you can click through the items here on the nav pane to just understand a little bit about our utilities. So I'll call out a few that I think are really, really great. Awake is certainly one of them. This is a well-loved utility that is essentially there to keep your computer awake. So it'll put up this awesome little system tray icon here. If you click on it, you can choose from a, a series of options to keep your device awake for a certain interval uh, indefinitely, and also set preferences to whether or not you want the screen to be kept awake, if not just the device. Um, Color Picker is a great one, and we can talk about, you know, if you launch into these Power Choice settings, um, there are some great customizations that you're allowed to do. So Color Picker right now, as default, is set to have a Win Shift C shortcut key. So if I do that really quickly, it'll actually bring up a Color Picker, and this works anywhere on my screen. If, let's say if I, I click right here, I'll end up actually having this whole host of colors that kind of pop up. I can easily copy the hex code for that, and that's super great for designers. I know I use this all the time when I'm working in Figma, and I just need to quickly grab a color. Um, and what's great about this and what I, what I mentioned earlier is you can customize this. So say Win Shift C is just super hard for you to remember. If you really wanted, you can make it something like Win C. Um, that might conflict with other shortcuts that you have, but folks have, as we know in our Power Choice community, have all sorts of crazy customizations that work for them. And so really what we're trying to do with Power Toys is meet the user where they are. If there are customizations that you have that work really well for you, it doesn't have to be the case that they work well for everyone. We just want to make sure that you have the customizations and the ability to have agency over your own device. I, I love that. It's a little eyedropper tool like I'm used to having in Paint that just works everywhere across all of my screens and windows. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, and, and there's, frankly, too many uh, utilities to run through all today. Um, I know earlier we were chatting about one of the utilities that you're really drawn to, which yeah. is orders. I've been using this for a long time. I, I downloaded the tool from, from an, a, a hidden old Microsoft website, and now it's in the Power Toys. This is really great. Yeah, it's awesome. So for folks who aren't familiar with what Mouse Without Borders is, this is a great way to be more productive if you have multiple Windows devices. So for example, one of my coworkers has this super wide uh, widescreen monitor, and he actually has his monitor split up so that one laptop is on one side of his monitor, and then he's got a PC station on the right side of his monitor. And he wants to be able to use just one mouse for both of these workstations. He doesn't want to have to switch between two mouses. And so what Power Toys allows you to do is you can set up an encryption connection between your machines and then just use one mouse to control across. And so it's really fun to use, especially if you're demoing it. We one time had this setup where one computer was in one room and another was in another. And you could use the same mouse across both of the computers because they were securely connected. And it's it's really sweet. So this is, you know, again, something that the community had been asking for. One of the great things is that when we look at the GitHub repo, which I hope we'll do a little bit later in this conversation, but we get tons of issues and 
terms of like people suggesting new features. And it's a super active community, um, not only in terms of folks suggesting things, but also in terms of folks contributing. If you take a look at our latest release, a good chunk of the, the PRs that made it in there are from the community. And so that's one of the great things about Power Toys. Oh, that's awesome to hear that the community is so engaged in, in helping these things grow and give feedback. So you mentioned there's a there's a GitHub for this out there. They're, you're telling me they're open source too? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we probably wouldn't be on this episode if we weren't, but that's probably my favorite part about Power Toys is the fact that we're open source. So let me actually go ahead and, and pull up our GitHub repo because it is too awesome to not show off. Um, one of the one of the great things I'll, I'll just call it quickly is we just hit a hundred thousand stars on on GitHub and and really that's an ode to the community in terms of how much contribution we've had. Um, Power Toys wouldn't be what it is today without the community. Um, to talk talk to it quickly, if if we take a look at the issues and the pull request logs, you can see that we're getting things as as recently as four hours ago, five hours ago, like. Folks are super interested in what Power Toys can do to solve their problems, um, different kind of idea suggestions that they can make. And that's exactly how we want to position Power Toys. I think I mentioned earlier, but one of the cool things is a lot of the Power Toys that we work on today end up either influencing or even becoming Windows features later on. For example, if we actually, I'll take a step back from the GitHub really quickly and I'll, I'll show off quickly one of our really cool accessibility features in our mouse utilities. So if we open up mouse utilities, um, one of the cool things that we have is this uh, feature for mouse pointer crosshair. So this is really great for folks who have hard eyesight when it comes to seeing where their mouse is. And so if I, if I hit the activation win shift P here, Oopsies. When Alt B, excuse me. Um, what you can see is we have these crosshairs that come up, and this makes it super easy for me to identify my mouse. We have customizations for changing things like the color. I'll turn this off again. But if you actually pull up the settings, you'll you'll see. And I'm not sure if this is in, in the latest build or not. It's certainly an insider. Um, but we actually have a mouse pointer on uh, Windows settings now, and that is completely influenced and. I think large amount of the code has been borrowed from Power Toys. And so that's a great way that like, as, as far as inspiring the community here and, and the community is really what inspires us, but folks that, that contribute to Power Toys, those, uh, those utilities have a better than that chance of ending up influencing the actual OS in some way or another. It, it feels like additionally, fancy zones is now part of where we can maximize and control the size of our windows and set custom layouts. There, there's kind of a few layouts now baked into windows that feels like an evolution of fancy zones. Yeah, totally. You're, you're exactly right there. So for folks who are unfamiliar with fancy zones, fancy zones is this great power choice feature. It's, it's one of our most popular. If I hit wind shift um, kind of apostrophe, if you will, uh, I pull up this Fancy Zones editor, and this is actually a great way for power users who have all these really intricate layouts, you know, be it overlapping windows or really neatly nested side-by-side -side windows. It's a great way for you to kind of set up where you want things to be. So if I go and actually edit a layout here, you can see I can sort of drag where the zones are. I can get rid of zones. I can add zones. And really, this is great because, you know, if I, I save it, and then I, I close out of the editor and I pull up, let's say, for example, a sticky note. I can drag around the sticky note. And as I'm holding onto the title bar, hold the shift key down. And you can see I can drag it into any one of these regions here. So if I drag it into the one region, it's perfectly snapped there. And one of the great things is Fancy Zones, like you mentioned, has actually inspired the snapping of windows. So the ability for me to drag things to the side and have that snap to an edge, um, or especially when you hover over that maximize, minimize button, uh, and you see sort of those preset layouts, a lot of that was inspired by research that we got from, from Fancy Zones and how well loved it was by the community. And so uh, not only is kind of the, uh, I guess the existence of utilities and Power Toys something that contributes to what goes into the OS, but also Power Toys is a great forum for folks who really love features to voice that. And, and that's a lot of where we take our user research from issues that get left in GitHub. We use that internally, not to just kind of uh, inform what happens on in Power Toys, but also what we work on in Windows as well, because my team works on Power Toys and we also work on Windows. Oh, that's great. But for folks who aren't familiar and are just learning about Power Toys, where can they get a copy? Yeah, 
Power Toys is super easy to get. It's in the Microsoft Store. You can get it from Winget. And of course, you can get it on our GitHub. So our documentation, which I think we'll link uh, somewhere in this video, is super, super solid. If you go to the Power Toys GitHub, uh, which we're looking at right now, um, you can see that there's all sorts of links on how to download it, where to access it. We have recommended ways to download it. Um, and there's all sorts of types of builds, especially when it comes to um, folks learning how to contribute. We have great documentation on how to build Power Toys locally, how to test things out, how to test just parts of the app. Um, and that's one of the great things that uh, our GitHub and our documentation are, are there for. Oh, that's great. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much, Ethan. This has been great learning about Power Toys today. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Glad to be here. And we'll see you next time on Open at Microsoft. <laughs>